and welcome to the stunning Travos Golf and Country Club here in Cornwall for the very first Legends Tour highlight show. If you want to see Ryder Cup captains, major winners and icons of the game going head to head next to the Atlantic Ocean, you're in the right place. We'll meet the host of this week's event, Ryder Cup winning captain and former Masters champion, Ian Woosnam. We might be getting on in our age a little bit, but we still can hit the ball as well. I'll catch up with the new kid on the block, Legends Tour debutante and Ryder Cup captain, Thomas Bjorn. Have you been welcomed onto the seniors track? They're not very welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> the players head to Rick Stein's cookery school, which proves to be more disaster chef than master chef. I watch Rick Stein all the time, but I just can't do it. And of course, we'll have all the highlights from the Farm Foods European Legends Links Championship. The Legends Tour is a brand new name, featuring some brand new players and the introduction of a brand new Alliance Series concept. But how and why did these changes come about? Only one person can answer that, the man behind the whole thing, the Stacial founder and group CEO of the Legends Tour, Ryan Halston. The idea for the Legends Tour came about, and I remember it exactly. It was 2018 in the Seychelles, and I was talking with David McLaren, who was then the head of tour, and I'd recognised that the playing experience, playing alongside them, because we'd tested playing in tournament play, I said, I thought this is the best experience in golf. I said, I think that you are totally underutilising the players even at the local level, so you've got an event on, you've got Woosnam teeing off, the, you know, the Masters champion, and nobody knows about it. Taking what these players are and putting them front and center of the brand was the key thing. Oh, beauty. Now, obviously, in the US, you've got champions, so I think Legends is a great name. And then I managed to procure the Legends Tour name, and that's how the Legends Tour became the Legends Tour. What we've got to do is we've got to create the best experience in golf for the amateur. Playing in tournament play, the only place you can really do it are the Dunhill, the AT&T, Pebble Beach. It doesn't really exist. And the players, when they play in that, are going to get a completely different experience to playing in a pro-am. It's not the same. And my idea is that they play for an order of merit. Then obviously we've introduced the celebrities playing for their charities and going to the tour final to play for cash. You know, it's going to put some pressure on them and they're going to be nervous. So all of these things are going to amp this brand up to a whole other level. Yeah. There you go, partner. This week's event in Travos is the first UK event of the Legends Tour. The first tournament that counts towards the overall order of merit was the KitchenAid Senior US PGA, which took place at the end of May and was won by Germany's Alex Checker. So, of course, he is top of the order of merit. But there's a long way to go. Sweden's Joachim Hegman, who is playing here this week, came 14th, which means he is third on the order of merit. We caught up with him to talk about his performance. Joachim, it's great to see you. Welcome to Cornwall. Let's talk about the US Senior PGA. How did you feel about your performance? You know, 18 months out of playing competitive golf and being able to put in such a nice performance obviously shows that I, I've been able to keep uh, on top of my game, so I'm, I'm happy. And already you're third on the order of merit before we even start here. That's a bonus. Now, obviously, that was great for me to get an invitation to play at the PGA, and uh, I managed to win the US Open qualify the week before, so I'm into that major as well. So it's been a great start to the season. You're in danger of me calling you one to watch this week, then, in that case. I'm quite confident. I feel like I'm playing well. I'm hitting the ball more or less where I wanted. At the PGA, it was more like a US Open kind of style. But this is going to be more like the British Opens, and, and obviously we don't have much of this at home. So it's going to be nice to be here, enjoy the week you can see what I can do, but uh, nice to get started again. Good luck this week. Thank you very nice much. Nice to see you. A great result for Joachim, who joins an incredible lineup of legends taking part in this week's event, including 12 Ryder Cup captains and former players, all of whom are hoping to walk away with the first prize of 50,000 euros. Hosted by a certain Mr. Ian Woosnam, the Farm Foods European Legends Links Championship has a wonderful history and is the perfect way to start the UK leg of the tour. Travos Gold Club is, is just fantastic. What we love about it is the fact it's a family business as well. It's a beautiful area overlooking the sea. 300 acres of green grass, golf course, followed by dunes and, and beaches. Although it does get busy down here, it's away from the what we call a rat race. 
You can just sort of chill out a little bit, get to, go to the beach, do some surfing, do some swimming, some beautiful restaurants, and I think it's a beautiful part of the world. It's very much like Jersey, from where I live at the moment, so it's like officially coming home a little bit. This event is so special because there's no other sport, cricket, football, tennis, where you can be playing with the legends. We've got major winners, we've got about 12 Ryder Cuppers, and they still help us with our putts and help us enjoy our round of golf. You can see the enthusiasm, all the amateurs coming to play this tournament, and you don't get the chance to do that many times. Uh, you know, we might be getting on in our age a little bit, but we still can hit the ball. A real test of golf here, in particular if it gets windy, because obviously you're looking straight out to the sea, and my word, when that wind gets up, it becomes a different game. They'll need to use most of the clubs in their bag, and if you've got to do that, it's testing. This week it's hard and bouncy, and you've got to really be in control of your golf ball. Uh, I think you're going to see a good low hitter of the ball do really well here, and uh, you just want to be steady, get some pars in, take the advantage on some of the par fives where you feel like you can make some birdies. Driving and putting most of the time will get you around any golf course, but if you've got imagination, there's plenty of drop-off slopes, undulations around greens. Be a bit creative with how you approach things and plot your way around. The one thing I would say to the amateurs is make sure you enjoy it. The best thing about being on the Legends Tour is, of course, you get to meet legends. And I'm allowed to call you that now because it's the Legends Tour. Uh, hello, Paul Laurie. Hello. Hello, Michael Campbell. Hello, Thomas Bjorn. What's it like being the new boy? It's nice. They're oldies. <laughs> rookie rookie, now, rookie yeah. again, yeah. Have you been welcomed onto the seniors track? They're not very welcoming. You know. <laughs> <laughs> We're a happy like... bunch here, mate. What are you talking about? Are. Come on, Thomas. They look at you like you're just going to steal their money, so... Is it, Paul, as, as competitive? Have you still got the fire in your belly? Unbelievably competitive. Can't wait for Friday morning. That's what we're all here for. Chance to win. Let's just talk about Woozy, who's the host this week. How appropriate is it that he should host this first Legends event in the UK? Yeah, brilliant. Obviously, we've all known Woozy, you know, a long, long time. Uh, great character, obviously can still play. So, no, it's great to have someone of, of his stature uh, host one of our events. Michael, are you happy with the Legends Tour branding? Are you delighted to be on that? Yeah, it's fantastic to, to be associated with Legends Tour, to have someone like Ryan Halsham involved now. You know, if you Google uh, Golf Nut, his name will come up. He's so passionate about the game, which is fantastic. But uh, yeah, it's nice to be back again competing with these guys. Ryder Cup 12, former Ryder Cup players, captains, a couple of major winners. We've got like a big old field on this Legends Tour. To be able to call it Legends Tour, you want somebody that's done something, people that watch it and come to the tournaments, so they want to see players that they can relate to and you know, they, they grown up watching and we want to see Woozy, we want to see, you know, these guys and there's more guys coming behind Harrington turning 50 this year and so you, these are the guys that you want to see and, and to grow the brand and grow the tour, you, you need players like that. When do you get serious? When does this get serious? Friday morning, let's back, <laughs> game on. Can't help but notice Chippy, nickname? Chippy, yep. Uh, is it anything to do with your demeanour or something, or your golf, or what? <laughs> uh, well, it came from a long, long time ago, a friend of mine, when I wasn't a very good player. Um, I used to chip and putt a lot, and he said to me one day, all you do is chip, I'm going to call you Chippy. And, I, and then people just started calling me Chippy. I have a love of French fries, too, which is, some people think it comes from that, but it doesn't, it comes from my short game. Right, it's time for a little bit of fun. Two of you didn't grow up in this country, so I'm going to forgive you if you've never heard of the game High or Lower. Basically, a legendary game show host in this country would pick a card and would then ask you to guess High or Lower. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go Legends Tour Ages. Paul, as you grew up in this country, I'm going to start with you. OK. Joachim Hegeman is 51. Alex Checker, younger or older? He would be younger. You are correct. Is Darren Clark younger or older than Alex Checker? Older. Correct. And some bloke called Thomas Bjorn, is he younger or older than Darren Clark? He would be younger. Three out of three for Paul Laurie. <laughs> Not bad. Right, Michael Campbell, your golfer is Ian Woosnam, who is 63. Is Tom Lehman younger or older than Ian Woosnam? See, that's a way difficult question, too. <laughs> I'm going to say Tom will be younger. He is younger by a year. He is 62. I was going to go older there. Now, is Nick Faldo younger or older than Tom Lehman? Younger. He is one year older than Tom Lehman. He's 63. <laughs> is Mark James younger or older than Nick Faldo? These questions, honestly, are <laughs> so hard. Um, older. You're correct. You have got two out of three. Mark James is 67. 
Paul got three, Michael has two, Thomas, it's your go. You have to get all three right just to draw. Feels very competitive, this. Thomas, your player is Philip Price, who is 54. Is Michael Campbell younger or older? He'll be younger. <laughs> <laughs> well done, he's 52. Is Paul McGinley younger or older than Michael Campbell? Oh, he'll be older. He is older by two years. And is Colin Montgomery younger or older than Paul McGinley? A lot older. Only three years, Step but you've got all three right. Pieces, That's three for Thomas, which means we have joint winners. Paul and Thomas are the joint winners with Michael third. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> good effort, though, Michael. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Good luck this weekend. Thank really you. good to see you. Thank, thank you. you. No trip to North Cornwall would be complete without a visit to Rick Steins. Coming up, we send some of our legends to his world-famous cookery school. We've got a bit of steak on the go. I don't eat fish. I've had a few champagne, so I'm all right. It's like that scene from Ghost. <laughs> and we'll bring you highlights from the Pro-Am. Welcome back to the Legends Tour Highlight Show. Now, when you think of this area of North Cornwall, you think great golf, great scenery, great surfing, and great food. And of course, no one's more famous around here than Rick Stein. We sent some of our legends to his world famous culinary school for a night they wouldn't forget. I'm Jack Stein, I'm chef director at Rick Stein Restaurants, and we're here in our cookery school overlooking Padstow Harbour. So tonight we're going to have the, some of the professional golfers from the tour. We're going to come in and we're going to teach them a little bit of cooking. We're going to do a bouillabaisse, which is a classic French fish stew. Obviously they can play golf, but can they cook? <laughs> we'll find out. I made some baked beans on toast. Yeah. Oh, a roast dinner. I'm all right at the roast. Uh, Yorkshire puddings. I'm not yeah. bad at Yorkshire puddings. I do like cooking, but not posh food, though. <laughs> He's very good, actually. Yeah, he does. He does as he's told. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Is that what I say? I watch Rick Stein all the time. It's my favourite programme, cookery programme, but I just can't cook. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rick Stein Cookery School. So we just thought we'd have a pretty simple cooking class. We always come from the Mediterranean, very famous around places like Marseille, and it's a beautiful, beautiful dish. But what we've got in front of you is, is the selection of ingredients that we've weighed out for you. We're going to actually put the vegetables on first. Just peel your onion, and, and then we're going to finally dice it. Drop the rest of it? Or? No, no, just put it all onto the tray down like that. Then put your olive oil in your pan. While one person's cooking, the other one can start chopping the celery. Okay. And once the celery's done, chop the fennel down as well. Because you're competitive, I am going to award a winner tonight, I've decided. The fish filleting is where the uh, wheat from the chaff will be separated. That's nice. Come and taste this, Paul. Oh, wow, that's lovely. Well, the stock looks really nice, but yeah. that's down to the missus. <laughs> but now we're filleting some fish. And I've never done that. We'll, we'll see how we go. Just trying to get this fish, whatever it's called, getting the bones at it. We're doing all right, I would say. Something I've never done before, then. I've, I've watched a lot of programmes, but never really done it there, so... Hoping I'm doing OK. I've had a few champagne, so I'm all right. <laughs> We've got a bit of steak on the go. I don't eat fish. How would you like your steak? Well done. Well done. Give it another two or three minutes on that side, and then you're going to add your butter. OK. If everyone gets their fish, I give them a nice seasoning, because we're actually going to grill these fillets, and then we're going to poach the prawns. Yes, yeah, skin skied up. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now we need to pass the sauce. So you get your saucepan and put it through this sieve, like so, and squeeze all of the flavour out of there, because there's so much flavour in the vegetables that you've been cooking. It's like mashed potatoes. Paul and Sharon getting very cosy over there. What are you going? Mm. It's in there. It's like that scene from Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so your potatoes can go in now. Your fish is going to take between a minute to two minutes under the grill. A little bit longer, another 30 seconds. What are we doing now, Chef? So, yeah, it's just into the bowl. Into the and then bowl. cover it with the, the hot stock. Right, into the bowl. OK, everyone, you've done fantastically well. I'm going to pick a winner. OK, 
Okay, Barry. Yep. Just gonna give the sauce a bit of a taste. The herbs look well cooked. <laughs> Two desserts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice amount of fennel in there. I like it. Top the oh. <laughs> The fish looks really well cooked. There is competition in the chance, room. Chance, Jack. Are we in with a chance? I take euros at the moment. <laughs> oh, it's a very nice, very nice beer base. That is great filleting. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. There has to be one winner, um, and it's going to be Tommy. <laughs> For somebody who's never cooked before, that shows an immense amount of skill. I've done what Jack told me to do, and I've done it there. I listened to him. He didn't listen very well. What can I say? Well done, Tommy. You, you've seasoned that really well. <laughs> it's been fantastic having you here. You've got a really busy few days ahead. I'll be cheering all of you on. And Tommy, I hope you carry on cooking, mate, because that's fantastic. If you need a caddy, I'm here. Now, while the players may not have what it takes in the kitchen, they definitely have what it takes out here on the golf course. Here's what happened when they were joined by a few famous faces and enthusiastic amateurs in the Pro-Am. As any club golfer will tell you, the chance to play in a Pro-Am alongside legends of the game is not to be sniffed at. And so it proved. No pressure. As the great and good of Cornwall, along with the stars of the Legends Tour. Headed out onto the course, <laughs> ahead of the main competition starting on Friday. Next on the tee, Eric Hurd. Some of the amateurs were making it look easy. It's 248 to reach the right hand track, stronger breezing this thing. While the wind was making things tricky for the pros. It's too soft. Can I do the left one, or? Oh, it's 264 in the air. It's not straight down, is it? Go for the left, left. Go. Go. Go, go, go. Good try. Good try. After a thoroughly enjoyable day, all that was left to do was raise a glass to the weather, the wonderful company, and, of course, the golf. That's it. The fun and games are over. When we come back, action from day one and two of the Farm Foods European Legends Lynx Championship here at Travos. Welcome back to the Legends Tour highlight show from the stunning Travos Golf and Country Club here in Cornwall. So far, the players have enjoyed a night out at Rick Stein's Cookery School. Come here like a kipper. Bloody caddy. Experienced some of the famous Cornish hospitality during and after the Pro-Am. But with 50,000 euros up for grabs, it's time to get down to business. Here is the best of the action from day one of the Farm Foods European Legends Lynx Championship. Well, thanks, Georgie. Just look at that. A simply stunning part of the world. A fine and challenging championship course, especially on a day like this with a stiff breeze. Sophie Walker is alongside myself, Dom Hollier. And Sophie, a great sense of anticipation about this week. Isn't it just 18 months without playing competitive golf? They've sat on their sofas, they've watched every other tour tee it up, and now they're back. This is your host, Ian Woosnam, the 1991 Masters champion. Slight hip problem, so he won't be doing that famous celebration that we saw on the 18th green at Augusta. One of the many famous faces who will feature on the Legends Tour over the course of this season. You can see the breeze out there. Bit of a struggle out there, to be honest, for Woosie. Another major champion, Michael Campbell, the Kiwi, who held off Tiger Woods to win the 2005 US Open. Handy short game skills from Cambo. Also struggling a little bit on the opening day, though. 81 for Woosnam, 70 
1988 for Michael Campbell. And making his debut, the great Dane Thomas Bjorn, Ryder Cup captain in Paris. This man's game suited to Lynx golf. Look at that curtailed follow through. Never yeah, nearly won the Open Championship, didn't he, at Royal St George's? Lovely start from Thomas Bjorn, getting himself. Well, I suppose just sort of game ready. It's been a while for him. Always had a good short game. Chip and run up a two-tiered green. It's a feature around this golf course at Travois. 73 on the opening day for Thomas Bjorn, and this is a two-time senior major champion. Roger Chapman, the Englishman, evergreen at the age of 62. Fifth hole, challenging par four. And he would tap that one in for a par four. Joachim Hegman, first Swede to play in European colours in the Ryder Cup. Coming here after a top 15 finish at the Seniors PGA Championship over in America. Can we get the fist pump already as well, Sophie? He's right into it, is Hegman. Oh. oh, there's the towel gone. <laughs> and so to the 1999 Open champion, Paul Laurie. Adding a little more stardust to the Legends Tour. Rookie of the Year in 2019, having won his home National Open, the Scottish Senior Open, in some style as well. He won't mind a bit of breeze out there. He won't, and it's a lot warmer than in Aberdeen down in Cornwall. This is the rookie, the Welshman Liam Bond, started his Legends Tour career with a double at the first hole, but he's bouncing back to level par playing the sixth hole. Just a short par four, only par four playing under par today. Marcus Breer, the uh, Austrian, he's won his National Open a couple of times. He's here at Travose, and he has found the closing par four in two. This is for a birdie at 18. Nicely done. And look out for him this season. He'll probably be challenging up there on leaderboards. And Peter Baker, another Ryder Cup man in this field. First win on the Legends Tour came in 2019. The French Open, hosted by Jean Van Der Velle. And you can see him dancing one in there, pin high. To Barry Lane who was a runner-up here, Sophie, two years ago at Travaux, behind Frenchman Jean-Francois Remessy. Can he go one better this time? Well, that'll do. That'll help anyway, certainly for Lane, who's been back in Sweden over the winter months. And here's Chris Williams, born in England, but lives over in Johannesburg, has won many times on the Sunshine Tour. Yet to win in Europe, though. It is second to the par five, ninth hole. He'll go on to make a birdie there. Another play with a yellow golf ball. Yeah, he's won a couple of times on the Legends Tour, but as you say, not yet in Europe. He's won in Brunei, he's won in Sharjah. That's very tidy. Coming off a birdie at 17. Another chance there. Ashley makes his par and opens up with a round of 69, which is three under par. This is Phil Price, the Welshman. You remember him at the Belfry Ryder Cup taking down Phil Mickelson with an excellent short game, just like this one. Tell him who I beat, he said to his teammates when he was introduced in the bar afterwards. Tell him who I beat. He's got some game as Phil. He tops the Legends Tour Order of Merit in 2019. And he's been playing some very steady golf. In fact, Price the only man to go bogey-free on the opening day. Mike Williams, he opened up with a round of 69. They're tied at the top. Barry Lane and Orr tucked in nicely. Paul Laurie among those at one under. It's going well today, so uh, I'm, you know, I'm probably uh, pleased like all the other players that we, we, you know, we've started the tour again. I'm looking forward to the next couple of days. So after a thrilling first day on the course, some of the big names were making their way towards the top of the leaderboard. And it was all set up for a fantastic second day.
Another glorious day on the North Cornish coastline for round two of the Farm Foods European Legends Links Championship at Travaux and the Championship Course. Now among those in the mix, eight times Legends Tour winner Barry Lane. South African Chris Williams still going strong at 62. More Ryder Cup stars in the shape of Phil Price. And 2018 captain Thomas Bjorn. We go to Lane at the 15th, his sixth hole. Started at number 10, he dropped a shot at 14. This is his second to the par 4, 15th, and that is a cracker. He makes birdie there to stay at two under par. Onto the par 3, third, 166 yards. Looking to draw one in there. And he does so. Very pretty little par 3. See a lot of players using this slope, the green tilts from left to right here. Well, Barry goes on to shoot a round of 73 on day two. Perhaps slightly disappointed, would have hoped to make a better move. There's Roger Chapman punching one into the wind. It's a lot stronger today. Got to control that ball flight. Made history as the first European to win both the Seniors PGA and the Seniors US Open in the same year. Yes, switch wind out there today as well, Sophie. So a very different challenge to what they faced in round one. Here's Chapman at the third, his 12th once again. Trying to bring it off that bank. And does so very nicely. Chapman would hold that. And he goes on to shoot a round of 71. Two birdies and just the one drop shot, ever so steady. Signaling to the crowd. Yes, that is the birdie dance. Well, it's nice to see the smiles, isn't it? As we said, so many players haven't played in so long out there. It's good to get the card back in hand, to get the competitive juices going as we go to Peter Baker at the 15th. An eventful start. Birdie, double bogey. Birdie, birdie. Makes another one at the 15th. It's a colourful scorecard. And here he is at the third. Similar sort of theme on the homeward, homeward nine, I should say. He's coming off a double at the second. Looking to bounce back straight away. Once again, using that slope. Makes birdie. Also makes birdie at the par five fourth. And Peter Baker round in 71. That's one under par on day two. Thomas Bjorn on the 11th. He started his round on the 10th. This is his second hole. After a round one at 73. Got a bit of work to do. He's done so well there, finding the back hole location on that two-tiered green. Yeah, that's a birdie birdie start as well. He popped that one in. He birdied the tenth as well. Four under for the front line, Bjorn, so making a bit of a charge out there. His tee shot at the third. Over the valley. Two parts from there for par. But he did pick up shots at four and six as well. Onto the ninth from the centre of the fairway. You cannot see where that has landed. It's straight up the hill, but I can tell you, Thomas, it's very good. Didn't make the eagle, but he did two part four birdie, and it's the low round of the week so far. A 65, eight birdies, just the one drop shot. Here's Phil Price at 15, tied for the overnight lead. Nicely done. Pops that one in, three under the first six holes. Made his first bogey of the week at the 16th, his seventh hole. Here he is on the par three, staring it down. Two under on his round, playing the third. Using that slope on the left-hand side. It's been written down on the yardage book. Play it to the left-hand side of this flag. He makes birdie here. He picks up another one at the fourth for a round of 68. Minus seven for the tournament from the Welshman. Tied up to the first round with this man, Chris Williams. Here he is at the 11th. A challenging par three, two-tier green. It's over 220 yards. Excellent. Well done from the South African. Looking to win a third Legends Tour title ten years after his first victory on the senior circuit. On to the third, another par three, one six six. Minus three through the turn. 
Will it come down off that slope? Come on, we've seen it before. Keep on coming. He'll make a par there, but he'll pick up another shot on the fourth. Yeah, everyone's making birdies or better on the fourth. Shortish par five. This is Williams' third shot at the ninth. His closing hole. And he couldn't pop that one in, so apart the last. Williams round in 68, but bogey-free significantly out there today. That's very tidy stuff in these conditions. And once again, you can't separate Price and Williams at the top. Great move from Thomas Bjorn and Paul Laurie tucked in there as well. It's been, I think, almost 18 months now. So it's been a long, long time. And I have to say, I find myself very fortuitous to be in a, in a winning position after such a long layoff. I mean, anything could have happened. And uh, to have got off to a good start like this is very encouraging. It's set up for a dramatic final day of golf. And after the break, we'll have the best of the action from day three of the Farm Foods European Legends Link Championship. See you in a couple of minutes. to the Legends Tour highlight shows where it is time for the third and final day of the Farm Foods European Legends Lynx Championship from here in Travaux. Another beautiful day, wind down for the morning starters, but just picking up as it always does in this part of the world for those out later. They're playing in three balls and the uh, final three, including the two leaders and this man, Thomas Bjorn, six under, one back heading into round three. Chris Williams, the South African, 62 years young, hunting that third Legends Tour title. And the 2019 Legends Tour Order of Merit winner, Phil Price, they're both at seven under par. Here's the Scotsman, Andrew Oldcorn. Long birdie putt on the third. Par 366 yards, finds the centre of the cup. Dropped a shot at the second, so a nice bounce back there. He birdied four and five as well. Here's Phil Price. He also bogeyed the second hole. Chance to bounce back. At the fourth, the par five. Finds the green in two, two putts from there. And he's back at where he started the day at seven under par. He dropped a shot at the sixth. This is to save par at the eighth. Slides past the hole. The Welshman's going backwards. Drops to minus five for the tournament. Going in the other direction. Thomas Bjorn coming off a birdie at four. Another chance at five. Well, oh, stop it. Surely, surely that's got to go. Walk slow, Thomas, round the houses. Oh, he's given it the famous Bjorn stare, and in it goes. It wouldn't dare not, would it? Excellent stuff. So uh, Bjorn to eight under par and leading the tournament. 65 yesterday, remember? This is his second to 10. Par five up the hill, 523 yards, going at it with an iron. How about that? Another birdie for Bjorn, so moving it to nine under par. But he's got company up there. Slow start from Williams. One over through seven. This is tee shot at the par three eighth. He'll make birdie here and picks up another one at the ninth. To move alongside Thomas Bjorn and tie for the lead. Yeah, back to back par fives around the turn. And this is Williams into the tenth. Hybrid in the hand. Gets plenty of height on this one, so it can stop right by that flag. What a great response by the South African. Two parts later, it is another birdie for him. So that's birdies at eight, nine, and ten. Williams to nine under as well, alongside Thomas Bjorn. A four shot gap then to Peter Baker and Phil Price. And we'll pick it up at the strong par 3-11th, 221 yards, and Williams. Really tough stretch of the golf course here, the 11th and the 12th. Trying to work one in there right to left to that front flag. Bjorn next up. 
One of the longest hitters in the field this week. So just a short iron for Bjorn. He's asking, what is that? He has pushed it. Well, that's not his best. You do wonder, don't you? It's been 2013, so eight years since he won on the European Tour, so he's bound to have a bit of adrenaline going, maybe one or two nerves out there as well for Thomas Bjorn, being in contention again. Phil Price. Looks like Williams has set him a marker. Anything inside that one? Oh, I don't know why he looks so worried. That one nearly went in. Closest to the pin there by Price. Yeah, not the final day he was hoping for by any means so far. Maybe he can make a charge over this back nine and get himself back in the mix. Big ask, lying four behind. Let's go to Old Corn at 15. In the bunker here on the left-hand side of the par four 15th. Must catch ball before sand. And by the sound of it, he did. That's good there. You can't afford to go left of this whole location. A couple of Legends Tour victories to his name. He also won the BMW PGA Championship, didn't he, at Wentworth? Biggest win of his professional career. And this is Austria's Marcus Breer, his third to the last of the par fours, the 13th. A lot of players using the yellow ball. They say it stands out clearer. Sits up in the rough. And that one will stand out for you, Marcus. Go on. But it's only a couple of inches from the whole side. Yeah, he needs that as well. He's just dropped a shot at the 12th. Bjorn. Across the green at 11. He's got too much on that. He has, yeah. Always oh, been a good pitcher of the golf ball. Plenty of loft on that. Too much check. So he'll have that one for his par to stay at nine under. Meanwhile, to Old Corn, ahead at the 15th. From distance. Looking to two-put this one. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I was thinking, just lag it up there, Andrew, but he obviously wasn't. Moves into a tied for third. That was shifting as well, wasn't it? <laughs> Confidently struck. Excellent stuff from the Scot. Let's go to Bjorn. Par putt at 11. Remember, Williams is in pretty close here. This is a match by situation. Oh, Bjorn races it by. You can see Williams putting his ball down. He's got his for a two. Bjorn's looking like making a bogey. Hmm. Well, things could be about to change at the top of the leaderboard. Let's go to Peter Baker at 13. Par part for the Englishman. These par fives, you've got to be taking advantage of them and not making bogeys. Yeah, so Baker's going to give one back there to Williams to get to 10 under. Massive put by Williams, said his expectations weren't too high. The pressure was on Thomas Bjorn. And that's four birdies in a row. And that is some move, isn't it, from the 62-year-old South African. Price also for birdie. Five behind, though, at the moment. <laughs> Wouldn't you just know it? <laughs> it has been the story of his round, hasn't it? Potter's just letting him down a touch. Hitting the ball so well, tee to green. As a putt for a bogey four there. Not quite a gimme, is it? Come on, Thomas. All right, one gone. So there's a two-shot swing at the par three, 11th. And Bjorn is now two behind Chris Williams. So look at that, the top confirmation. Williams, 10 under par. Bjorn minus eight, Old Corn alongside Price, they're five back. Marcus Breer, Peter Baker, Paul Laurie also inside the top ten. And that is Old Corn finishing out with a par at 18 for a final round 70. <laughs> well done. He gets in at four under par. Peter Baker to finish his round in style with a birdie on the 18th.
That's a round of 70 to finish alongside the Scotsman. More problems, I'm afraid, for Thomas Bjorn, who, remember, was leading this tournament through the front nine. He made a double bogey there at the 15th, and he's dropping back. 99 Open champion Paul Laurie birdies the 17th. Mixed round, birdies and bogeys today, but he's even after 17 holes. To Phil Price at the 15th, his second shot. He's just birdied the 14th. That's a beauty, and he would hold that to get to seven under par. 13th hole, Williams for birdie to stretch his lead. Wow. That's the nerves, that's you've not played golf competitively for 18 months. Bit of a wobble, I'm afraid. He dropped a shot at 16. This is for par at 17 as well for the South African. Oh, my goodness me. So, he is back to eight under par, and he is only one ahead of Phil Price with one hole to go on this final day of the Farm Foods European Legends Lynx Championship. There it is for you. What a change at the top there. Paul Laurie in at five under par. Thomas Bjorn coming down the last with Price and Williams as well, also five under. And it's to the Welshman we go. And his second to the par four, 18th. Flags on the left-hand side. Looking to get it in close, put some pressure on Williams. Mm, you could see there he didn't want to go down that valley. Cautious when he needed to put the pressure on this man. He's been nervy with the putter, but his iron play has been splendid. Will it hold up? Yes, it has. Whew, thank you very much. What an amazing shot there by the South African. Given the pressure, given the circumstances, drop shots at 16 and 17, that is wonderful stuff from Williams. Bjorn, last to go. Big drive. No, oh, hates it. All the mojo's gone, I'm afraid. He dropped a shot at 17. So he is on the slide a little bit on this uh, back nine, having got himself into contention. Still, it's something he can build on for the rest of the season. Remember, this is his rookie year out here. Well, this has to go. Phil Price for birdie. Right to left putt. Remember, he's one shot back. It looks a low. Yeah, he was up and out of that one pretty quickly. He knew that, that was not going to hold the line. Par at best for him. Thomas Bjorn for a closing birdie. He's seen the line from Price. Looks to have set it out high enough. It's just not come back on him, has it? Disappointing finish to his round. Well, she was 73, one over par. Yeah, so a mixed week in all, oh, really, Sophia. 73 on day one, 65 that. Still low round of the week on day two, and then closing 73 on Sunday for Thomas Bjorn. Shake of the head. Different feelings for him, though. He's not normally in contention. He's coming to this week, and he's expected to win. He hasn't had that on the European Tour for a while. Williams for the win. Yeah, nicely done. This time the putter works and Williams has won the Farm Foods European Legends Lynx Championship. It's his third Legends Tour victory and it comes ten years after his first one. It's also his first win on European soil. Congratulations to him. Excellent stuff. A closing 70. In the end, good enough for a three-shot victory over Phil Price. Four clear of Bjorn and Paul. Chris Williams. There's the trophy. And look, it's quite emotional, isn't it? This is probably the best. The reason being that I've never won a single tournament in Europe or England. So I've won all in Asia and Middle East and South Africa, but not once in this part of the world. So this is a big milestone for me. This was the shot that secured the victory. After that wobble at 16 and 17, a wonderful iron into 18. His hands must have been shaking there. What a response. 
Yes, it's a brave shot, isn't it? And it is a shot and it is a day to remember on the North Cornish coast for Chris Williams. That's the end of the show from all of us here in Travos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.